I've been exploring again the whole area of faith, as I believe we need to remind ourselves often of how important faith is. Paul says that without faith it is impossible to please God. I want to be pleasing to God, don't you? And without faith it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11.6 Many shy away from the subject of faith, because of how it has been abused by some Christians in the area of prosperity. The trouble is, we can throw out the baby with the bathwater. Just because some seem to only use faith to amass wealth, doesn't mean that faith is wrong. One thing I've learnt is that faith is a law and it works for all those who use it. You can use it to increase your finances if you want, but often if we sought first the kingdom of God, the financial side of things would automatically come to us as a byproduct. I really believe faith pleases the Father when it's used to expand our knowledge of Christ. After all that Paul had been through in his Christian walk, his primary longing was to know Christ more and not to pursue wealth. I'm convinced that God wants us to use our faith along with our confession in the pursuit of knowing Christ. This pleases God and brings with it prosperity. This side of heaven, faith is extremely important, for we need it to communicate with an unseen God and experience all the blessings of heaven. One day we will not need faith anymore, for we will have crossed the finish line and will see everything with absolute clarity. In the meantime, though, while here on earth, it's absolutely essential to know how to exercise our faith. You can't live a supernatural abundant life in Christ without it. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Romans 12.3 The Bible shows us that we are all given a measure of faith which is under our care and it's our responsibility to look after it and make it grow. It's up to us to use this little faith that we have all been given and cause it to grow. Would God give lots of faith to one and then be pleased with them and only a little to another and not be pleased with them? The growing of our faith is our responsibility and there are two primary ways in which we can grow our faith and that is by exercising his word and speaking in tongues. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10.17. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Jude 1.20. In Romans 10.17, it's interesting to note that faith comes. If faith can come, then faith can also go. So we need to keep a constant guard over our faith. If faith pleases God, then you can be sure the devil will try his best to hinder us from pleasing the Father with our faith. I would really like to have a faith that affects not just my personal life, but also the lives of those around me. I believe that God is helping me understand how this can become a reality, and that's by the use of my faith. This verse is how this revelation has developed. That the communication of my faith may become effectual, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus, Philemon 1.6. It says in this verse that we can have an effective faith as we acknowledge every good thing that is in us, in Christ. As I have studied scripture, I can see that it's so important to realize, acknowledge, know, and discover the Christ within. The more you do, the more victorious you will be, for it's faith that overcomes the world. For many of us, Christ is out there somewhere, and all the blessings are there too. Knowing the Christ within releases you from the burden of living in your own strength and under the circumstances of life. To have an effective faith, a faith that is growing and producing fruit, is a wonderful blessing. It was said of the Thessalonican church, Your faith grows exceedingly. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 Their faith was effective and not weak. It was growing and coming and not going. Paul said to Philemon that if he acknowledged the Christ within, that he would have a faith like that. It would be an effective faith that would grow and change things around him. I can see that this really is a big deal. It's also important to note that the word acknowledge here is the Greek word epignosis. This means a precise knowledge which comes from the Greek word genosko, which is to know to understand, and also to have an intimate side to it. For instance, Adam knew Eve. 
He had an intimate knowledge of her. This acknowledging is not just a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. For many years I have sought God for certain spiritual blessings and seemed to make little progress as I strove to attain them. I was the victim all the time, the one needing victory. I didn't have what I wanted, so I figured that the best way to get it was to beg God for it until he gave it to me. There is a measure of truth in this, but there is a better way. I've realized that there is nothing more counterproductive than begging God for something that you already have. The word says that we have it in Christ. At first he will excuse our ignorance, but eventually he expects us to mature and understand the truth. I needed to believe what the word said, and that was that I already had it in Christ, had it all. How can you say you have it when you can't see it? The key is knowing that Christ is in you, and in Christ there is everything you need. Paul made some amazing statements that verify this truth. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Philemon was told he needed to acknowledge every good thing that was in him in Christ. What he needed was not something out there somewhere, but inside of him. He needed to believe it and to declare it, to keep saying it even though he couldn't see it or feel it. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption as in the world through lust. 2 Peter 1, 3-4 We have been given all that we need, and it's in Christ. It just needs to be acknowledged, believed, and declared. It's not in Christ out there somewhere, but in Christ who is in you. That's a big deal. Colossians says that you have everything when you have Christ. I meditate on this verse every day, and it has radically changed my mind. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. For in Christ there is all of God in a human body. So you have everything when you have Christ. You are filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. The Living Bible We may say we have Christ in us, but have we unwrapped the present, the unspeakable gift from the Father? Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1.3 Notice that we have already received every spiritual blessing in Christ. It's in Christ and he is in us. As we acknowledge the Christ within, it releases our faith and becomes more effectual. It's our faith that overcomes the world. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 1 John 5.4 It's faith that overcomes the world of poverty, lack, sickness and defeat. It also says in Hebrews 11 that the hearers of faith subdued kingdoms, who through faith subdued kingdoms, Hebrews 11.33. Our faith can subdue the kingdom of darkness as we acknowledge the conquering Christ within. This is a revelation we need to treat seriously and meditate on it day and night if we want to see our world changed. As your faith grows, you will find yourself in a place where you rest in the truth that all things are beginning to work together for your good. Your faith begins to affect the world around you. When you look at Paul's prayer in Ephesians 3, 16-20, you can see that it's his passion that we see and acknowledge the power of the Christ within. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to reveal this truth. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you, and the resting place of his love will become your very source and root of your life. Then you'll be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions, 
This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. I love what it says in the Song of Songs. The Spirit is given to us to help us know these things, to teach us. Now I know that I am filled with my Beloved, and all His desires are fulfilled in me. Song of Songs 7.10 Christ's passion is to fill us with Himself. Now I decree I will ascend and arise, I will take hold of you with my power, possessing every part of my fruitful bride. Song of Songs 7.8 Jesus desired that we might know that he was in us and we in him. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. John 14.20 It's the need to know, genosco, acknowledge, epignosis, that you are filled with your beloved. Does not the word say that you are the temple or house of God? He wants you to know that he lives in you. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. 1 Corinthians 6.19